All right, hey guys, uh, we're here, Zach and myself being we, and uh, here with Lucas from uh, Netrunner fame, I would say. You came to our plug-in tour and we got to hang out with you and it was a lot of fun. Was, so we thought maybe you would be able to tell us a little bit more about these Netrunner draft packs, which we got to start by saying, as Zach, Zach commented to you earlier and as we've been talking, like the one weakness of the LCG format, right? It's non-random, so you can't draft and, and do right. all that. And I know a lot of you guys kind of probably came up through the magic uh, circles and doing a lot of drafts and stuff. So I think this is officially sealed in the gap, right? Is there anything left to... Uh... <laughs> this, was, this was kind of the main weakness identified by a lot of competitive players. They're like, you know, I love the LCG format. I love how it gets me into a lot of different games at once. I can play them and I don't have to, you know, throw my wallet away and discuss. Yeah. Uh, Except I can't draft, you know, yeah. and that is a format that a lot of competitive players really love to participate in, and so it's been, I guess you could say a weakness of the LCG format in the fact that you would have to build a cube or something similar yeah. in order to draft, yeah. and so we kind of just said, like, is there a way that we can fix this or Absolutely. give players a richer experience with the LCG. Yeah, yeah, and totally. So this is kind of what we came well, up with. Well, it's like with. you have these awesome games with all these cards that you've already designed and had made. Right. And it's why not use them for draft and seed, right? So like, why that's, not? That's why one of the beautiful not? things about Good a question. game like that is some cards that may not make the cut and constructed a lot of times can do some work yeah. if you just use them, right. and especially in a limited format. So, right. Fantastic. So you're saying Darwin's really going to make an appearance. I mean, in limited, Darwin's like a bomb card, I mean, Darwin's right? better than not Darwin. You know <laughs> right. what I mean? Drips, so, this is crazy. All right, so we have draft packs. Let's now, see. this is the first time an LCG has had a sealed format. How does this work? What do we have here? We have a starter and we have a corporation and a runner. Can I just look at them? You can. <laughs> yes. There are so, rules in here. I bet you there, there are, are some rules. There are some rule cards. All right. And you got so a rule this, card? Yep. And there, there are several rule cards, actually. You'll find more of them. But the Neverrunner ones are a little bit more tricky than other ones because, obviously, you have two decks that you are playing yeah. in a regular yeah. Neverrunner tournament. So for draft, you have two options. One is the full draft where you buy one of each of the Corporation and Runner draft packs, and you have this draft starter, which you will need. And the other option is that you just buy one or the other. And I only recommend this option if you have an even number of players. Yeah, that makes sense. I mean, <laughs> otherwise it'd be... Right, what? otherwise you'd be have a, a random person. So, <laughs> okay. Right, so you have a new identity that you what? can use and draft. Hey, look at that art. And the mess. Exactly. And the, the most important thing about these identities is the no infinite number of Infinite influence. influence. That wow. That that makes me crazy. Right. That's, that's so, amazing. So honestly, like the inspiration for the, the Netrunner draft packs, the Android Netrunner draft packs, was really the original release back in the 90s where you didn't have any factions. So I'm like, well, what if you have a game, our game, And back then you didn't have factions. influence either, right? Right, exactly. You didn't have influence. <laughs> and so some people might be like, oh, how do you signal what happens? But honestly, like it kind of takes Netrunner back to its roots. This yeah. is fantastic. You know, yeah. Corporation and runner. I also and love the, you so you've got the, the core money cards because you've got to have some money. Right. Yeah. You've got the core icebreaker which is what runner has to have absolutely and then you've got agendas just in case right the the and agenda the, the agenda the one that the runner wants to see and then the corp wants to score it's right. perfect right the priority requisition is important because you know your economy might not be as strong as a regular constructed game probably yeah. won't be and so this allows you to draft some big ice and know that you always have some needs if you are running these agendas in order to get it also rest. scoring priority rec in a sealed game has it's got to be a lot easier like hope, when you, we're when gonna you, hope we're but they, it's like, they have right. it's yeah. They have Crypsis, but it's like, oh, do they have a stem hack or not? It's like, probably not. I don't know. It's it's and question in the original Netrunner, you didn't have a minimum like you could have more than three of a card in deck. So in drafts, can you have as many as you draft? You can. Yeah. Yep. So if you draft, you know, five sure gambles, you can play five sure gambles. That's crazy. Man. All right. So this is the starter. Now, do you right. have to, you have to have this anytime right. you draft? You have to have this. Right. So you can buy like, this buys once. This, you and can buy this it. once, and you can keep using the cards in here. Right. Each now, time you draft, though, you're probably going to want to pick up one of the other draft packs as well, because this isn't quite enough to play by itself, as you might see. Um, the thing, so if you're a, a cheap person, which uh, a lot of us are, because we got an LCG, we don't have to spend money. You could essentially create this, right? You, as a, you could essentially create it, but you don't have right. this. You would awesome need identity. the identity, though. Yeah, and so that's so every that's every it's critical identity in draft is this. Right. Yes, that is correct. Yep. So there's one I did. All right. So shall we? Shall we bust open this uh, corporation? Oh, wait, wait. Pack and see what we Aha! Uh -huh. 
The shadow, you can use it from all factions of the sec. Of course. Yeah. It's got a little bomb on it. Look at that art. What's mm. the bomb? Does that right. mean the So the bomb means it's the Cyber War draft. Set. Okay. And so. Cyber Wars, and there's going to be other wars? If, if we ever do more, they would be called something different than Cyber Wars. <laughs> I caught that. I like right. this guy. So now, now we're looking at... What is this? So, so the way it works random, is that... I mean, right, it, it's random. Oh, it's awesome. But you'll notice that the cards were kind of put face down to begin with. Yes. And so basically, when you draft, you will steal 10 off the top and create like a booster. Okay. Uh, okay. And Sweet. then you will pick up those 10 cards, look at them, um, take one, now, pass it around. Now, I'm assuming you guys have put these in particular order. Each, each booster I guess it's constructed random, but it's like it's in order, so the, the top ten you draft. Right, exactly. So you don't want to like, order. Right. You, you don't, don't necessarily want to buy a draft this. pack and then like shuffle right. it off. You right? do not want to do that. This? Unless you're playing the Game of Thrones one, then you do. But for the Netrunner one, you do not want to shuffle it. Okay. So there so are differences. Cool. Between I, I need to see this. I, I, okay, so Hold on, just, just... just imagine you're here, right? It's your first pick. Oh my lord. You know what you pick. No, you don't know what you pick, and that is the issue. I totally know what I pick. So a lot of players are going to gravitate towards this. Nope. But the ultimate thing is, like, are you going to have enough money for Sand Sand in a draft? Like, are you going to be able to make that happen? It is a little bit harder to use. I mean, Janice is like, man, that's a bomb card in draft, but can you get it up? Right? Beal, if you have the ice, this could be a game-winning agenda right here. If they can't get in, they can't get in. Maybe I'm a waiting player because I, I take the money. I would, I would be looking at three cards in this pack. One is the Beal. It's a 3 2. Yeah, that's a big three deal. 3 2s by themselves are very strong. Right? right. The other one is a Roto Turret. Program destruction and drafts can be a little bit stronger. Here, here's well, I'm going to argue with you, though. Okay. I see three Crypses over here. It's true. Like a Roto Turret, I mean, I think Crypts is going to be the primary breaker in draft, right? So Roto Turret is going to be doing nothing. Actually, uh, in my experience, Crypsis is not used nearly as much as you would expect. Your experience versus my random uh, thinking, it can't be and, better. You know, <laughs> Wait, Crypsis, you is pretty, Crypsis is pretty expensive to drop on the table. You know? Fair enough. And so, like, just the early game aggression this could potentially allow you to, to use as a corporation. All right, so you'd be looking at these would, two. What's the third I would, card? I would, I would probably end up taking the three, two, but Beanstalk would be the third Beanstalk, card. Beanstalk, yeah, just money for card. That early economy. Right? I feel like robbing my opponents of all the money cards. Right. Like, I mean, you also have to look like there's already like five pieces of ice in this pack. Yeah. So I'm, I'm less inclined to take the Roto Turret just because I see it ice heavy to begin with. Yeah. Man, I feel like Chum is big in draft too, though. Because it's like. Well, get, every card in sealed inherently becomes better. Chum becomes crazy. Just your way. Chum becomes crazy. Plus two strength is a, big, a bigger deal, I think, than it usually is. And you don't know. Like, it could be trash ice, like a hunter back there. And that's an issue for you because you might have your barrier breaker out, you know? And it's like, that, this is going to end the run a lot. I like Chum and Draft. But we have to think about these cards so differently. Yeah, it's like I said, I feel like the power level of every card is up. Right. Because another, it's another, such core. Another thing to note, and this is kind of an important difference, is that in draft you actually played a six agenda points and not seven. Oh. Because of the smaller deck size. And so these are actually very risky to ride. That's because half if your you points. lose two of them. But if you score but one. But if you can score one or two of <laughs> you're them, you're halfway. Right, you get it. Wow. So a 3 so 2 is of, a big deal right, now, too. That's a third a three of the difference. 3 2 is, right, a big deal. And so whether or not you choose to run three point agendas is actually a really difficult choice to make as the corporation. Oh my gosh, it's so good. Oh, it's all so great. All right, so here's a question. Let's say we, we pop down to the local store, we have our starter, we, get a, we buy a draft pack, we do a draft. Um, these cards, are they playable, legal? Uh, they will be legal if you use opaque sleeves. So just yeah, like so they can't see the back or whatever. Because right. exactly. they're a little right. little different because color, a little different, different feel. Right, exactly. They have a um, little draft icon on them. But they are totally they legal. Are. So like, if I, if I want another Sand Sand... You could, yeah. I could grab the sand sand. Really That's a really good way to have to do that without getting So it's like perfect. A I mean, you, you get new players in, they buy one core set, and then it's like, hey, let's do a couple drafts. You can probably pick up like another sand sand, maybe another uh, of some of these uh, one ups in the core set. Yeah, it's fantastic. That's great. I mean, this just feels so good. Of Melange, man. Now, Trading will now exist in LCG. Talk probably. about this card in drafts. Yeah. We yeah, I'll sit on that. that card would, <laughs> yeah, I would definitely go for the Milan here. Yeah. I mean, a sustainable economy is... Key. Well, it's an economy they have to get to. Right, exactly. And it's like, if you have any kind of mean eyes... And this card is also very fun in draft. Enough, it would not be my very first good choice. In draft. But if it came around again, I would put. That's what, like, I feel like there are going to be so many cards that we look at differently because of draft. I, I put this card in every NBN deck and then promptly cut it afterwards. But, like, in draft, this makes a lot of and sense. If you could pick up a couple of those, start slapping them on I your mean, central servers. Who's going to be the guy? Hey, keep these in order, by the way. Who's going to use these later? Who's going to be the guy who runs, like, who runs the tag and bag in draft? 
Because it's doable. It is doable. It's so doable. Right. Well, it's like, how many Scorch are you going to see? Do you pick Scorch because you may not see another one for this today? I don't know, and that, dude. And, and in draft, we recommend that you draft the Corporation first. And basically, that allows you to kind of... Know what's in the field. Figure out what your strategy is, and also hate draft the runner side. <laughs> yeah. In order to prevent some it's of like, those I really, counter cards from Yeah, it's like you, you don't want them to have the anti-tags or anti... Right. exactly. Or uh, anti You know, Plastic Rate is a, or a score short tag, so a big so deal here. start hate drafting those cards. All right, let's see what first 10 for the runner. Smart. Let's see the first so 10 for the run. All right. Creeper, Tinkering could be a big card in draft. Deep Thought. There's a the Plastic Rate. But like... Okay, hold on. I won't go there yet. Oh, there it is. Gordian, give it to me. Well, okay. Nope. A lot of, a lot of interesting things here. Um, weirdly enough, I mean, Creeper is a Sentry Breaker. That could be cool. It depends on if you're running your Crypsis or not. I mean, Gordian's an obviously what good do you take choice. Here? It's obviously a good choice. But uh, Gordian kind of jumps out at you. I mean, I feel like I mean, if this is your first pack, you probably pick the Gordian. If well, this is your second or third pack, you, you might not pick it, you have depending Crypsis. on what other programs you I feel like getting a solid... Breaker of each kind right. is like if you can get that out early, you can just start going. Tinkering's nuts. a big deal. Wow, the Tinkering round, is awesome. Right? The first round hasn't Tinkering's even started, really and you guys are <laughs> hey, man, already we, added. Huh? We heard there was drafting, and it's like we yeah, love products. We love drafting. We're gonna get all so over it. Sure, sure. It's in, uh, uh, yeah. So wait, I'm so like play so I gotta game. ask you a question. Then. Sure. So some of these cards that come out, like Force of Nature, for instance, sure. we look at it and it's like this card is bad. Um, so the question is, were some of these cards designed knowing a draft format was coming? Is that a part of the design strategy, or will it be now? Like, is there a limited right. aspect to this? I would say we haven't really outright designed cards knowing. I mean, we knew it was a possibility to do a draft, but we want each card to stand in the constructed regular format on its own merits. And so some of those cards that you might label bad... Cyber Fear? They're not... Woo. They're not Woo! the best cards, but on the other hand, they reinforce different faction strengths and weaknesses. Yes. Yeah. And yeah, totally. so sometimes you can only tell that a card is good or bad in relation to other cards. And so if you don't have those slightly weaker cards in a faction, you won't see the stronger sure. cards in another faction. So they're really just kind of reinforcing some of the color pie of the game. Nice. Nice. Man, this is a crazy one. How about how about Cyber Feeder? I mean, I think you have to take Opus in this you, case. You have to take Opus, right? Is Unless you're going to argue with Opus. I mean, it's just click 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 for like three turns and just I mean roll <clears throat> notoriety is an interesting play in draft I think it's gonna be I mean, pretty I'm okay easy. like getting handed that as my last card or like taking it with two or three left peacocks are great man this is a whole Code new world breaker, by the way actually it is my mind new is world. blown right now Aurora all of a sudden not as bad not as bad still bad but not as bad hey it can get you places because you, you can't just put Corroder in, right? It is likely in draft that you will have to rely on some breakers that you're not normally yeah. want to rely on. Which, which is awesome. Which, weirdly enough, generally makes money more important. Which now it's like, man, one run is probably going to cost you like 15 credits, 10 credits. like without. But at the same time, they have to draft their ice. They do. So if they sure. go for money early as a corp and they don't pull the ice... The like, corporation, you're juggling a lot of balls in the air at once. With I mean, agenda I, density, I feel ice like the corp, it's almost just like every other pull, I have to pull sure. ice. Because I'm going to want about half to be ice. But in, depends. I it depends on the quality of the ice. <laughs> I'm just saying. And I'm thinking, like, okay, so this first pod, if Underworld Contact, like, let's say I saw Underworld Contact, let's say I draft Rabbit Hole and this comes back around to me. So now, and I've just got to hope that there's another Rabbit Hole in the next, you know, few rounds. And then that that could be a thing. And now I've got some consistent money. Once you take that first rabbit hole, though, and no one else has seen a rabbit hole, they're more likely to pass up the subsequent rabbit hole than exactly. to grab those. It's the but rabbit hole game. It is still risky. Everyone right? grabs the first one, and you've all got one. I would say, right. I would say with big. a larger, larger draft. Like an eight-man draft. Right. Cool. Like, you might want to pick the rabbit hole. With a smaller four, six-man, might be, might yeah, be, might be a little risky. So way. now, is this the kind of thing where, like, I mean, obviously, this is probably a test. It's print-on-demand. Um, store, are stores going to be able to get this? Stores should be able to get this when we put it a into launch. The when release. you officially launch, right. that's awesome. Right. Uh, what about uh, so? Maybe you can't tell me this, but like the runner pack, how many different runner configurations are there? Are there a ton? There are a ton. So I mean, you won't get bored of the same ones right. over I mean, and over. Part of the part of the way the the packs are built is random, and so you know 
there could okay, be cool. repeat packs like, yeah, yeah, yeah. If, but you will get them because that is how randomness works that is how <laughs> randomness works it turns out uh, is there any? Are there any other special rules or changes we should know about as far as the draft is concerned? The, the biggest change is just the identity card that you're using and the fact that you can draft anything and use anything in your deck, and then the playing the six points. So I mean, those are those are pretty significant changes to the regular flow of the game. All right, so I'm going to tell you something. I uh, I thought I was I thought I was out. Of, I was in the clear essentially after we kind of had moved on to the LCGs. Now it was like, man, I'm not spending hardly any money. Sure. You know, I'm hanging out. I'm, I'm I'm playing. I'm having a good time. And now I'm already addicted to the draft format. I haven't even done it yet. I'm already addicted to it. So now it's like I'm just buying draft pack after draft pack. I just pack. need a draft pack. But I mean, how much is a draft pack? Five bucks. No, it's uh, it's gonna be a little bit. Twenty five bucks. Than that. I thought you said they were fine. That price. Well, the, what was the draft pack? Uh, I believe those draft packs are like twelve dollars. We don't know. And then uh, I don't know how much we're charging here for now. But, but like, I believe we're, the plan is those will be like eleven ninety five. The starter will be like four ninety five. You only have to buy the starter once. And then you need a draft pack to draft. Right. I mean, you'd pay. I'd pay fifteen dollars for a draft tournament for yeah. price support. Like no problem. The store provides. I pay ten bucks. The store provides it. This is great. I love it. Yeah. Well, Lucas, thank yeah. you so much, no man. No problem. It's a period time. Thanks for coming down to Plug Day, too. We had a good guys time. you can try one out. Yeah. yeah. Hey, you know, I'm not doing anything today. What are you... You're doing... I got Star Wars uh, later You're doing today. Star Wars. Let's, Let's go. go. Right. He's like, Let's do it. All right, man. Thanks a lot. All right. No problem. And uh, thanks for watching, guys. More, More videos to come.